हेलो भिवार्स हाउ आर यू वेलकाम टू माई चैनल गयटार और थायरएड इनलार्जमेंट इज भेरि कमन प्रब्लेम फेस्ड बै क्लिनिशियन वन टू थिंक अबाउट ग्रेवस डिजिज व्हाट आर द क्लिनिकल फीचार्स हाउ टू इनभेस्टिगेट एंड ह्वाट इज द ट्रिटमेंट दैट इज व्हाट आई एम गोईंग टू टक अबाउट टूडे व्हाट इज ग्रेवस डिजिज Krebs disease is an autoimmune disease presenting with goiter features of hyperthyroidism and some extrathyroidal manifestations most commonly ophthalmopathy less commonly dermopathy and acropathy the etiology of Krebs disease is unknown but both genetic and environmental factors play role in the development of Krebs disease it can run in families environmental factors that are linked to the development of grace disease are life stress and subsequent activation of neuroendocrine pathway steroid use female sex lithium drug can promote development of grace disease and grace disease may sometimes be associated with other autoimmune conditions like type 1 diabetes mellitus vitiligo pernicious anemia celiac disease and edison's disease In this autoimmune condition thyroid autoantibody is developed against thyroid stimulating hormone receptor these autoantibodies after binding with tsh receptor cause activation of the tsh receptor and thus increase the production of thyroid hormone there is also increased expression of fibroblast growth factor which contributes to the development of thyroid gland enlargement now come to the clinical features Its peak incidence is in 20s and 30s but it can affect any age group. Females are affected 5 to 10 times more than the male counterpart. Patient presents with goiter features of hyperthyroidism and extrathyroidal manifestation. Features of hyperthyroidism are due to increased metabolic rate, weight loss, fatigue, sweating, heat intolerance, due to protein breakdown, weakness and fineness of hair. Due to increased sympathetic activity there is palpitation tachycardia and tremor neurologic effects are increased deep tendon reflex and nervousness reproductive effects are abnormal menstrual cycle and decreased libido now come to the extrathyroidal manifestations i have already mentioned that among the extrathyroidal manifestations ophthalmopathy is the commonest The ophthalmopathy in Graves disease is characterized by swelling of the extraocular muscle, proliferation of periorbital fat, later fibrosis causes skin teethering. These changes are due to accumulation of glycosaminoglycan and infiltration of lymphocyte in the periorbital tissue. This ophthalmopathy along with increased sympathetic activity causes lid lag and lid retraction thus giving rise to proptosis or exophthalmos patient complains of irritation in the eye foreign body sensation in the eye chemosis or increased lacrimation nerve palsy and diplopia may sometime happen even before clinical manifestation sometimes mri can reveal that there is involvement of the eye in grebs disease the next extrathyroidal manifestation is dermopathy it is seen in 1 to 2% of patients with grebs disease here glycosaminoglycan accumulate in the dermis layer of the skin most commonly at the anterior tibial aspect or sheen of the tibia this is called pretibial myxedema the skin become edematous swollen and discolored with brownish or pink tinge another extrathyroidal manifestation is acropathy This is very rarely seen. In this condition, there is clubbing and subperiosteal newborn formation. This is also due to accumulation of glycosaminoglycan. What are the laboratory investigations to do? If we test thyroid hormone and TSH level, it will show that there is hyperthyroidism. Anti-TSH receptor antibody can be measured. It is present in 95 to 98 percent of cases of Krebs disease. Another autoantibody that can be measured is called anti-TPO antibody. It is present in 75% cases of Graves disease. So, how to treat Graves disease? The treatment can be divided into two parts. Number 1, control of the hyperadrenergic symptoms. 
and number two restoration of euthyroid state the hyperadrenergic symptoms can be controlled by beta blockers like propanolol or atenolol propanolol has to be given three to four times a day but atenolol has benefit that it can be given once daily these beta blockers are discontinued once free t4 and t3 level comes to the normal level to restore the euthyroid state we can give the antithyroid drugs thionamide that is methimazole or propyl thiouracil methimazole is the drug of choice because propyl thiouracil can cause fulminant hepatitis but propyl thiouracil is used in patients with allergy to methimazole both methimazole and propyl thiouracil can cause rash in patient another side effect is agranulocytosis which can give rise to sore throat and fever so patient should be warned that if he feels any sore throat or fever he should stop the medication and contact with his doctor if methimazole is continued for up to 18 months then 30 to 40 percent of Graves disease will regress if the disease relapses after stopping methimazole then patient should be treated again with methimazole or can be considered for radioiodine ablation or surgical treatment radioiodine ablation is contraindicated during pregnancy an woman who has taken radioiodine ablation should be advised to postpone her pregnancy for six months during radioiodine ablation the grapes of thalmopathy can exacerbate to prevent this exacerbation, we can use steroid drugs during radioiodine ablation treatment. The surgical option for Graves' disease is total thyroidectomy or subtotal thyroidectomy. It is indicated in case of large goiter, patients having compressive symptoms, patients with severe eye disease, patients who wish to become pregnant soon, and patients who are allergic to antithyroid drugs. Before surgery, the patient should be given thionamides until euthyroid state is achieved. Then, two weeks before the surgery, thionamide should be stopped and oral potassium iodide or Lugol's iodine solution should be given twice daily for 14 days. This iodine solution decreases the vascularity of the thyroid gland, thus reduces intraoperative blood loss. Now, how to treat? the ophthalmopathy associated with Graves' disease. In case of mild ophthalmopathy, restoration to the normal euthyroid state is usually sufficient. The supportive care are using artificial tear for the eye, wearing dark glasses to manage photosensitivity, glucocorticoid therapy for worsening chemosis, diplopia, and proptosis. Sometimes immunomodulators like azathioprine, cyclosporine, intravenous immunoglobulins are used. Surgical decompression of the orbit may be needed in 5% of patients. In the end, can Graves disease be associated with hypothyroid state? The answer is yes. Due to continuous autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland, at one stage it may turn into hypothyroid state. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.